Welcome to a wet spot unboxing video. I'm the store manager, Cameron here, providing voiceover, and the man in front of the camera is longtime employee and manager Matt here to show off some of the beautiful fish we got in this week. They're now available for purchase in store online. We'll start off with the peppermint pike head, Lucia cephalus ara. It's a beautiful Gramian bed relative. It is an anabantive that is native to Sumatra in Indonesia. It'll get about five, six inches, a little smaller than some of its cousins. Naturally inhabits like black water, slow moving swamps with a softer pH. Uh, they do typically tend to like live or frozen foods in the aquarium. So you do have to be careful in terms of what you're gonna put with them or what all you're going to try to feed them because they can be both slow moving as well as a little finicky, though we do have good luck training ours onto frozen food. Next up, we have one of my favorites this week. It is the Orange Laser Corydoras, uh, sometimes labeled as Corydoras SPCW10 or Corydoras SP Orange Stripe. It comes from the Rio Ucayali in Peru. It is fairly closely related to the uh, bronze Corydoras that is found pretty commonly in the hobby. This one obviously has that stunning gold to it, but care for the animals is pretty similar. These will get a little bigger than two inches long, and like all Corys, they're schooling, so keep them in groups. They are overall fairly easy to keep and actually to breed as well, though you normally see wild-caught specimens in the hobby. Due to their rarity as well as their beauty, it does mean that they have a little bit of a higher price tag, but obviously the beauty is all worth it because you're not going to see that shimmering gold on all that many bottom dwellers. Next up, we have an old standby. This is Cryptopterus vitriolus, the Asian glass catfish. This guy comes from Thailand, mm -hmm. and as far as I know, these fish are always wild caught. Uh, there hasn't really been any sort of captive breeding or farm production of these guys. And keep in mind that for a long time, these were actually improperly labeled uh, as a close relative that gets about six inches. These will stay about three inches long. They do school very tightly, so you always want to make sure to have as many as your tank can comfortably hold. I personally would recommend at least six to eight individuals. They're very peaceful, they're very gentle. I've only ever had them eat really tiny fish or fry. Uh, mine always seem to relish flake foods or sinking pellets, uh, but they're just a wonderful fish and you don't always see that glass aspect of them and really many fish in the hobby at all, but it's a great catfish. Next up, we have an interesting one that you don't see every day. Uh, this is going to be the Rummy Nose Guppy, which is a trade strain of our good old aquarium stand by the guppy, which would, its far off ancestors would naturally occur in northern South America. This variety in particular does stay a little smaller than some of the other guppy strains I've seen. And the males and females on these are both beautiful. The males have that lovely red and white all throughout the body, and the females have a little bit smaller fins, but still very, very pretty. And I found them to be quite easy to breed and care for as well, just like other guppies, water of varying parameters, so long as everything's clean, the water is of at least neutral pH with some hardness to it, keep everybody nice and healthy. You can see on R as we pride ourselves on the quality, they keep their tails up. Unfortunately, you see drip tails or droop tails, excuse me, quite a bit on those. Next up is some stunners. Uh, these are the Port Mosby rainbow fish, also sometimes called the Parkinson's rainbow fish, Melanotania parkinsoni. These in the wild would be found in Papua New Guinea. So these are tank raised, it's very hard to get a lot of wild caught rainbows. Most of the time, these will hit about four and a half inches long, although I have seen some particularly old ones hit about six inches. Kind of a slim body for a rainbow fish. Here's a beautiful male, absolutely stunning red that does creep up the body as they get bigger. Females, another slimline body. They are gonna have, unfortunately, a bit less color, but like most rainbows, keep them clean, keep them fed, and overall pretty easy to keep and very adaptable in terms of water chemistry. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish. One of my absolute favorites for rainbows and pretty easy to put in a larger community tank. Next up, we have one that you don't see very often. Uh, I've noticed that we're unfortunately one of the few people that have these. Uh, this is the red tail tetra, Moncausia copai, which is found throughout quite a bit of the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. These in particular come from Colombia. They'll hit almost three inches in length. I'd say a huge male might be a tiny bit over that mark. They're, as I mentioned, unfortunately quite rare, uh, not often seen in the hobby. They're very pretty. With time, they'll get beautiful yellow all throughout the body and then some nice bright red tails. Like a lot of other community-friendly tetras, I haven't found them to be anything less than hardy and peaceful. You just want to make sure, of course, to have a decent-sized group, in my opinion, at least six individuals, though you can always go a little bigger for a more impressive display. 
Just nice activity, nice color, nice size without getting too huge. Next up is a, a very interesting geophagus species. It's an earth eater. This is uh, geophagus or geophagus, however you want to say it, Pellegrini. Uh, this is another fish from Colombia. They're a meaner earth eater. I would say that overall the group is mostly a lot of larger, peaceful schooling fish, but this one's a little bit of a jerk. Absolutely stunning though, males as they get some size to them as they approach their full six and a half, seven inches. We'll get some beautiful oranges and yellows and greens to them, even in parts of the fins, just absolutely beautiful. And sometimes they'll even get a little pointy nuchal hump. Not huge, not super imposing, but something interesting to look for. Uh, also sometimes leads to their name, the yellow humped earth eater. But unlike some of your other geos, you definitely would want to put this in a feistier cichlid setup or with some sturdy schoolers like silver dollars, larger catfish, just because it can be a butthead. The Colombian whiptail catfish, Rhinoloracaria eigenmanii. Uh, this is a fish that's going to get up to six inches if you include the tail in some of the trailers. You'll read a little smaller, but these are some awfully big boys in this bag, ladies, of course. This fish is native to the Orinoco. Uh, these in particular, again, came out of Colombia. They are omnivores, so you'd want to feed them a fairly varied diet in captivity. Despite the sucker mouth, this fish isn't necessarily going to eat a ton of algae, if any, in my experience. A lot of mine that I've kept personally do spend a lot of time just chilling, as you see here, on a log or on the bottom. I even like to provide them a fairly deep sand substrate because a lot of these whiptail cats will like to burrow uh, pretty readily with only parts of the tail or the head poking out. But so long as you cover that, they're pretty easy to keep. Very interesting little bottom dweller with some personality. A lovely fish. Last up, we have a stunningly beautiful pleco. Pleco that you see typically in the hobby. This is L18, Barian Cistrus Anthelis, the gold nugget pleco. This fish is interesting. And the reason I say that with some trepidation is that this is a fairly commonly available pleco. It can be tricky to keep alive. These come from the Rio Jingu in Brazil. They normally come from fairly clear water, fairly fast flowing and warm water. And in aquariums, they can be hard to feed consistently. As a good friend described it, they're aquatic cows. You just want to throw out a lot of vegetation or algae based foods or zucchini, just as much as you can green wise, as well as mixing and sinking pellets or uh, live foods just to keep them fed. It's very, very often that they starve to death or freeze to death because they're kept too cold. Thank you again for joining us for our unboxing video. We love to show off our fish. A uh, friendly reminder that all of these fish that you did see are currently available as of time of posting, both here in the store as well as through online sales. So if you saw something you can't live without, be free to stop in or shoot us an email and we'll be happy to uh, add the next denizens to your aquarium.